Here's an example of a function machine where you have an in and an out. We have a rule stated right here that when I go from in to out, I'm going to be adding nine. So whenever I'm going forward from in to out, I'm gonna be adding nine. So this box here is pretty easy. I have a six, I'm going forward, so I know I'm going to be adding nine. In my thinking bubble, I could be thinking that six plus nine. Now I know that six plus nine equals 15. So I know that my out box is going to be 15. This is another relatively easy one because I'm going from in to out. It's just going straight forward so I can follow the rule. So in my thinking bubble, I'm thinking 15 plus nine. Well, I know that 15 plus nine is like 15 plus 10, which is 25. And then back up one because I only got to add nine to it. So I'm up to 24. The other boxes are a little bit more challenging because I don't have the in. All I'm given is the out. So in this first box here, what I'm actually thinking is something plus nine is gonna equal my 27. Now that's not a very fun equation for me to solve. I don't know how to solve that. I can use my fact families to help me though. I remember that little plus little equals big and I can turn those around. So I could also think of nine plus something is gonna equal 27. So that really doesn't help me to solve it anymore. I still don't know what that missing number is. I also remember with my fact families that there is also some subtraction problems where you start with the big number first. So I could take 27 minus one of the little numbers, perhaps the one I don't know, equals nine. Or I could say 27 minus the other little number, which in this case is nine, equals my missing number. Now this final one here is the one that's most helpful to me because I can solve, start with 27, take away nine, end up with the missing number. So if I take 27 and minus 10, that would be 17. But I only had to minus nine, so I get to keep 18. So you can see how those fact families actually helped me to flip this around and turn it from a plus nine problem to a minus nine problem. I can do the same with this thing right here. Something plus nine is gonna equal 18. So something plus nine is gonna equal 18. Now I'm getting pretty good at my fact family, so I don't necessarily have to write every single equation out. I know that I can turn this around to a subtraction problem pretty easily by starting with my big number, which is 18 and then minusing either one of the little numbers. Well, I know 18 minus something equals nine doesn't help me. So I'm gonna to cut to the chase and right away go to 18 minus nine equals my mystery number. Now this I can solve. This is a basic fact. You should know that 18 minus nine equals nine. So we found a pattern. When you go with the rule, when I go from in to out, I was adding nine, everything was easy. When I was going backwards though, I actually went the opposite way of the rule. So when I go following the rule into out, I follow my rule, which is plus nine. But when I go backwards, I go opposite of my rule, which is minus nine. Now that we see that pattern, I can use it for my next set of problems. So here, this time my rule is minus six. That means when I follow the rule and go from in to out, I'm going to minus six. But we found that with our fact families, if we go the opposite way from out to in, I'm gonna do the opposite, which is going to be plus six. That saves me a lot of time because now I just know that anytime I go from in to out, I follow the rule, which is minus six. So nine minus six is gonna give me three or 13 minus six would be 12, 11, 10, nine, eight, seven. These harder ones, I know that I'm doing the opposite. I'm going backwards, so instead of minusing six, I'm gonna plus six. Eight plus six is gonna give me 14. Oops, and 12 plus six is gonna give me 18. Now you can always double check. If it's a minus, that means when I go from in to out, I should get smaller. So these should be my bigs and these should be my smalls. Big, small, big, small. Big, small, big, small, no, I did it correctly.
Now, sometimes with your function machines, they're not actually going to give you the rule, but you can still solve it if you can find an in and an out that is both given. For example, right here, I have both the in and the out. I know I'm going from a small to a big, so I must be adding and getting bigger. Now I just need to figure out how much I'm adding. 3 to 7 or 10 isn't a big jump, it's only adding 7. So I know that anytime I follow my rule, I go from in to out, I'm going to add 7. And anytime I do the opposite of that, I go from out to in, I'm actually going to minus 7. And you can actually draw that right on your test or right on your function machines to help you keep organized. So I start with the ones I do know. 13 plus 7 is going to give me 20. 43 plus 7 is going to give me 50. There's only one that I don't know the in. It's something plus 7 equals 30. Well, we know from our fact families, we can turn that around into a subtraction problem and do 30 minus 7 equals something. So 30 minus 7 is actually going to give me 23. You may have noticed the pattern in here that they have 3, 3, 3, 3 in the ones. When all the ones are the same, the ones in this category have to be the same too. 0, 0, 0, 0. Just a little trick to pay attention to. So now it's time for you to practice on your own. You can think of it as fact families, or you could draw those nifty nifty little arrows across the top and bottom to help you to stay organized. I want you to please copy down these two fact families. When you're ready to go ahead and solve them, push pause, and then you can play again when you want to check your work. Hey, welcome back. Let's go ahead and check our work. I know that my rule for this particular box is, is given, and it's going to be minus 4. So when I go from in to out and I go forward, I'm going to be minus 4. That means when I use my fact families and I reverse it, I'm no longer going to add or minus 4. I'm now going to add 4. I do the opposite. So if I'm minus 4 going one way, I need to add 4 going the other way. 8 minus 4 is 4. 12 minus 4 is 8. Now those are the only two where I can actually follow the rule. They're the only two ins that I have. Now I have a couple of outs. And I know that when I go from out to in, I do the opposite. So I'm going to add 4. 12 plus 4 is 16. And 6 plus 4 is 10. And your last one, 16 plus 4, notice these both have 6's in the 1's, so I'm guessing these are both going to have zeros in the 1's. 16 plus 4 is 20. Notice it does indeed have a 0 in the 1. Check your work. Did you get 4, 16, 8, 10, and 20? Now this one's a little bit more challenging. The numbers are bigger and we don't know the rule. But that doesn't mean we can't solve it. You look for the two that are given right next to each other. So I have 1,700 and 1,200, or 1,700, 1,200. Since I'm going from big to small, I know that I'm subtracting, and I just need to figure out how much I'm subtracting. Well, I know that 1,700 and 1,200 are five hundreds apart, because 7 is 5 away from 2. So I must be minusing 500. That means every time I follow the rule from in to out, I'm going to get smaller by 500. But anytime that I go backwards from out to in, I'm going to actually get bigger because I'm going to add 500. So here I have an in and I'm going out. I'm going to follow my rule which is get smaller by 500. 1000 minus 500 is 500. Here I have another good one, where I have an in and I'm going out. I'm going forward, so I follow the rule. 900 minus 500 gives me 400. Because 9 minus 5 is 4. And it wasn't really 9 minus 5, it was 900 minus 500, so it needs to be 400. Now these two are a little more tricky, because I don't know the ins. Something minus 500 equals 300. But I remember with my fact families that we could turn that around and make it an adding problem this time. So my two small numbers, 300 and 500, get added together, and I end up with 800. Same with this last problem here. We know that this side is our small numbers, and when we have two small numbers, the 700 and the 500, it'll finally give us our big number. So 700 plus 500 is 1,200. 
I always like to double check my work when it's a subtraction problem. When it's a subtraction problem, that means my in needs to be bigger than my out. And here I can see big and small, big and small, big and small, big and small, big and small. So I know I did it correctly. Double check that you have 500, 400, 800, 1,200. If you did, you can go ahead and move on to your next activity. If not, try it again. Good luck.